Hello again, all my fishalots out there. It's Johnny Fishalot, and I'm excited to have you back for this one. There seems to be a misconception out there that just because you have aggressive feeding fish on the surface, that they're super easy to catch. It could look like BBC's Blue Planet out there, white foamers everywhere, but you just can't get a bite. So I'll solve that problem for you in this video with some helpful tips and tricks. Now let's get back to this big old 80, 90 pound tuna that's just screaming line off my fishing reel. <laughs> all right. Just listen to that line just peeling off that reel right there, fish -a -lots. That's what you live for when you go offshore fishing. And this tuna is going to peel off about 300 yards worth of line, and it's going to be awesome fun reeling this fish back into the boat. So those of you that watch the show regularly, you'll see a couple of familiar faces here. Here's JR double fisting some giant tuna into the boat and some of the best fishing boat mating that you'll see. And of course, Captain Tom Daff in a fishing fever out of Cape May, New Jersey, a good friend of mine, and I'm on his boat all the time. I love it. And I've shortened this fight down a little bit. This fish took about 25 minutes or so to get back to the boat. And right after I land this monster, I'll introduce you to the rest of the fish a lot crew. And let's jump straight into the tips here of the video with how to fight big fish. The most common mistake I see with fish a lots out there with really big fish is they take these really dramatic motions with the rod trying to get the fish into the boat. What they'll end up doing is a high stick the fish and then they'll drop the rod really quick to try to make up some line. That's not the way to do it. All you're doing there is giving the fish plenty of slack in the line to work itself off the hook. What you want to do is have very slow controlled motions. I never lift this rod up past 60 degrees. I'm usually between that 45 to 60 range and I'm always squared to the fish keeping that fish right in front of me. So you see me here. I'm going to take slow cranks, one crank, half a crank. I'm doing great. I'm taking advantage of the fish doing those big death circles as we call it. As a fish comes in, I'm, I'm gaining on the line. And as a fish goes out, I'm pulling it up a little bit. So you'll see me work this fish in pretty efficiently, pretty quickly. And you'll see Tom here put the gaff in it. And fish in the boat. Flavor in the air. Come along with the gaff. And I'll be diving deeper into how to fight big fish in a later episode of Fish Lots. So stay tuned for that. Got to put some back into that one. There you go. Yeah, I'm going to have to do some editing here on the fish lot crew, so uh, be prepared to see that sign quite a bit in this episode. Yeah, another good fish. Yeah, another good fish. And there's the crew. Yeah, and as promised, here's the rest of the Johnny Fisherlock crew. There's Joe on the left, Rob in the middle. There's Tuna John, and of course Anthony, who's going to be the entertainment for the day. <laughs> Say hi, YouTube. <laughs> Ran numbers here. Yeah, yeah. I recognize those. And this next tip will be no surprise to the regular viewers of Fishing with Johnny Fish a lot, and that is you have to find the fish before catching the fish. And so right here I'm highlighting two humps that are coming way up off the bottom, and it's creating this awesome little trough right here, or drain, where water is just going to be forced in between here by the current, and this water is going to be much faster than the surrounding areas, and it's going to force bait fish in there. So sure enough, the tuna were laying right in there in a notch and they were coming up and feeding right as we were passing over it. And we're going to hit this spot time and time again until the tide changes, that water current dies off and the bite dies off. Then we're going to have to search for the tuna on the surface with those white foamers that we're going to get into here momentarily. And these same tactics work brilliantly well for flounder or any other inshore fish. So right here you can see I'm using a natural point, a natural choke point where that water is going to be funneled in and I'm going to fish on the opposite end of these notches where those flounder are going to lie in wait for easy prey. The same applies for freshwater fish. Here's some big catfish I'm able to pull out of the Potomac River and you can tell right here by this chart I'm actually going to use the main channel edge and another point to serve as a choke point and sure enough those catfish were right in between that choke point same exact thing as the tuna waiting for fish to come by so that's a quick awesome tip right there of how you can locate fishing spots no matter whether you're offshore inshore freshwater saltwater that's the way to do it right there fish a lot
Now, coming back full circle, taking you through the full progression of the day, the current dies off and those fish move out of that trough. They move away from that choke point and they're going to start showing themselves on the surface, as you can see by these arrows right here. What the fish are going to do is they're going to take matters into their own hand and they're going to start schooling up little baby mackerel. And they're just going to blow up on these things throughout the whole rest of the day. These fish are going to be on the surface. It's going to be so fun to see them act, to see them hunt, to see them kill things. However, this is actually going to be the part in the day where the bite is going to be the most difficult. And here's where the tips and tricks come into play, where we're actually going to have to entice these fish to commit fully to the baits. Now, I'm going to show you one right here. You're going to see constant blow ups. That's going to be so much fun. But I'm going to show you how you could actually turn those finicky fish into dinner right here. So let's take a look. Some fun footage coming up for you, fish lots. Down here, I, I yeah, right here next to the boat. Top right now, this is the first time I saw them coming up on a tail. There they are. Yeah, next to it. Yeah, Roger. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, yeah, get ready. Oh, there we go. All right. Yeah. Yeah, they come back around. <laughs> That's honorary fish. And so a great example right there, we had a big school of fish feeding on the surface. We ended up just picking off one, whereas in the previous video you saw, we were getting triple, quadruple headers almost every pass, and that was over that notch. Yeah, that's a dead one. Good job. Now, these are big fish. Nice job. XL model, brother. XL tuna. XL beer now. <laughs> XL beer now. There they are again. Oh, yeah, here. Got another plate. There it goes. Oh, you missed it. Pick out one on that one. Crazy. And all right, let's walk through some of the nuance right here. So right there with that red arrow, you see that first blow up. Now that's the first fish that came up. He blew up on the bait and he missed it. So now you see JR in the left corner there. He's jigging two rods at the same time. He's got the rod in his left hand. He's got the line in his right hand. He's frantically trying to trigger another bite. And there it is. All he's doing is jigging it right there. He's just moving the bait in the water. The fish missed it twice. Tom runs over and he says, let it go, let it go. Now what they're doing is they're dropping the baits back, signifying that the bait was dead. The tuna killed it. It's going to come back and hit it right here with this blow up right there. So now the fish came up and he swallowed it down and we got two more hookups. In order to get this right, you have to know how fish hunt. You have oh to know God. what the fish's mood is during the day. You have to track the That's trends. Really These fish became more and more finicky throughout the day and we had to get more and more creative right here. Tuna dance time. Now we're gonna walk underneath, underneath all you guys. Take a step Anthony, back. Take a step back. Walk in line. Easy does it. There you go. There you go. Good job. Yeah, they're all like, they're all the same. Nice job, as always.
And then, of course, as I stated in previous videos, you always have to bleed these fish. If you leave the blood in the tuna, it'll absolutely ruin the meat. These fish were big. They're flapping all around, so it's better to just open up the fish box just like this. Slide the fish in there. Let the fish freak out in the box. This way, the other two guys can bring in their fish nice and easy and don't have to worry about that fish uh, breaking an ankle or anything like that. Yeah, and these fish are all really big yellowfin tuna. So here's a technique right here on how to bleed the fish. You're just going to slip that knife in and cut out the gill plates, and that'll bleed that fish great. The other technique here is to cut right behind the pectoral fin, right in the lateral line, right there you'd like to see, and that'll bleed out the fish just as good. So there's two techniques right there, and here comes the third fish over the gunnel, another monster. And again, here are safety first fish a lot. You never want to reach your hand in there while those fish are going crazy like that. They will break your hand, there's no doubt about it. So just let the fish be, cut them, let them bleed. Once they're dead, then you can handle them all you like. Now hooking into one of these angry massive fish won't do you any good unless you know the techniques involved in how to reel these fish in without injuring yourself. That's so it. go ahead and click on this end card right here where I dive deep into those exact techniques on how to fight big fish. All right, I see you out there on the water, fish a lot. Yeah, knock it out.